Oh my God, I'm so stoked. I'm so excited about this talk today. Why? Because the time has come for us to shine the light on the darkness. Yes? Yes? yes. Absolutely. The time has come. And wow, Donna, that song just, I'm about to just bowl out of here into heaven. So powerful. I love the part where she says, you know, I'm not the voices in my head. You know, I'm not, I'm not what people have said. All this, what, what is it? I'm not the voices in my head. I'm not the things my family did. All these things. It's all the darkness. It's all this stuff that we just bring into this moment, bring into this present moment that we're living. And we don't live the happiness that we are worthy of. Because we believe this, this chatter in our minds, this, this fearful voice, this darkness. You know, I call the darkness just the space of where we forget who we are and we identify with form. We identify with stuff that's going out, uh, on outside of us. We identify with that. We believe we are that darkness. And it's very unconscious. It's just something that we experience in this world of duality, which is really not true. And that's why we have to have a spiritual practice. This is why it's important to come on Sundays and listen and go out and practice. So we can lower the chatter of that voice. You know, there was a song, remember that song? Pump up the volume, pump up the volume, pump up the volume, dance, dance. There was a song like that. And <laughs> And it was, it was an oldie song. Do you remember the song? Um, and, and that's what we got to do. We got to pump up the volume on the voice of love. That means shine the light on the darkness. And we do that by having spiritual discipline within our minds. And I see it that I feel that we stay in the darkness because we really make things matter. How many of us really make things matter? We give it so much attention what the doctor said. We give it so much attention what our partner says. We give so much attention what you know our, um, our boss says. We give so much attention of having to stand in that line to get our license. So much attention to pay our taxes. You know, we give so much attention to these things and form that we lose our power, we lose our peace and our happiness while we're at it. And guess what? There, this need not be. I am the light. I am the light. I am the light. And this is what we have to begin to incorporate. And I'm not saying this in just a little way. I'm saying this literally, guys. The time has come now more than ever to pump up the volume on the love in your mind to kind of just do it and be so willing that you get so tired. You're like, I am done. I am done with the suffering. I am done of believing that cuckoo mind in my mind, you know, that thinks a lot of caca, by the way. You know, all these thoughts, it's just, I am done. I want to experience the love of God. I want to experience it. It's my inheritance. It's my function. Are, we, are you guys hearing me this morning? I mean, I am just so pumped up about this message today. And the reason for this is because I'm experiencing it so much more, as many of you know. I'm a new mama. My little guy's four months. His name is Ari. And he is just so sweet. And I can just see his innocence. He's so innocent. And he reminds me every single day not to make things matter. Not to make things matter. I'll give you an example. So um, I nurse my baby. He's still being nursed. And it's normal for babies after they nurse, as many of you know, to kind of throw up or have a, you know, to, to let go of the milk or whatever, be messy. And every time I put a new outfit on him, he throws up. It's really, and then this morning I was holding him, I was looking in his eyes, I was like, my baby, my baby, and giving him love and bleh, all over me. It's like constant. I'll leave the house, I have him in his cute outfit, mama's so cute, she's walking out the door, bleh. You know, it's, it's, it's like he constantly reminds me not to make things matter. I've gotten to a point that this whole thing is just like I get the wipe, I get a wipe, I just wipe it off, and I keep on going. 
And this whole thing of him throwing up on me, I've taken it into practice of not making things matter. And what we need to do, just like I clean up with the little towel or with a wipe and I just walk out, is what we need to do in our daily lives with everything. How many times do we feel thrown up on? How many times do we feel like just so sad, so depressed, so over it, and we just stick there and believe it to be true and suffer so much? How about if you could just wipe it off and be free and be in the light? How about that? How about if just cleaning it up and saying, this is not who I am. This is not the truth. This is not my reality. Then we're on to something. Then we get to really live the happiness that we're worthy of. But we have to let go of what I like to call the big deals. The big deals of life. And as I was on um, doing my makeup this morning, I have these little cards on my mirror. And I kind of just tapped into spirit. Spirit, what would you like me to share this morning? Because I wasn't sure where I was going because I've been so busy with my four-year-old and him throwing up on me, I haven't had any time to really think about it. So spirit was so generous. And he gave me this message. I see this big deal in a new light. And remember the truth of love. As I let go of condemnation, the tight grip of making a big deal in my mind is released. I experience the freedom of peace and unconditional love. I like this part. As I let go of condemnation, the tight grip of making a big deal in my mind, my mind is released. So I love that. Letting go of the condemnation, letting go of the thoughts that I've made up is, is what frees me. So how we bring the light into the darkness is to really be very honest about how you make things really matter. How you make things really matter. How you really get sucked into things of form. To really get sucked into feeling very insecure maybe about your finances or maybe something going on at work or something going on with your partner. Of where you're really holding on to a grudge. Of where you're really suffering endlessly is to really get real with it and kind of just go within. And you need to practice this. I call it stop, look, and listen. So you just stop. You just stop yourself. And the reason you know to stop is because you're not at peace. The peace is the gauge of, uh-oh, I'm thinking something cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And it's not the cereal, okay? It's like, whoa, okay, let me stop. Let me be observant. Let me be what am I thinking? Oh, I'm thinking I'm not good enough here. Oh, I'm thinking so-and-so is a pain in the butt. Oh, I'm thinking this, right? So it's like being very, very conscious. What am I thinking? You stop yourself. Why? Because it's your divine right to stay stop. Stop, I am willing to get off this train. Stop, I am willing to say, stop world. I want to gain my happiness again. You are so willing and worthy to do that. We just don't do it. Guess what? We let the ego, we let fear slap us around all day long. Just slap us around all day long. From the morning we get up till we go to sleep, we just let the ego run the show. We believe our fear and we have a day that is not filled with love and harmony. So you stop. You look, you look with the spirit, you look with spirit, you look, where is it in your mind that your mind is not aligned to God? And I want you to listen. I want you to listen, just like I listened today in the bathroom that I got input to check that card, you just listen. People say, well, I don't know what it sounds like, spirit doesn't talk to me. Well, spirit doesn't have to be like, hallelujah. It's not like that. It's more of, it could be, listen, and if it is, tell me, because I want some of that. It's more of an inspired thought. It's more of something that really excites you. And it doesn't come from ego. It's something that you feel that you're like, oh, this feels good. Have each and every one of you felt like that before? Like something just feels good. There's no resistance. There's more like, hmm, this feels yummy. In a, in a way that is just very peaceful. And that's what I want you to be present to, of that you want to stop, look, and listen, and be, bring yourself back to that peace. Spirit has no room in the chaos. Spirit has no room in the chaos to be able to give you insight. The volume is very, very low. You can't even hear because you're believing the madness. You're believing the big deals. You're believing the darkness. 
But I have to say, spirit is always in the, in the, in the, behind the tree. Spirit's behind the corner, next to the corner, just waiting in your house to just come back in. It's right there, just hanging out, waiting for you to remember who you are again. <laughs> just, just waiting for you to remember, oh, she remembers me, I'm back. Right? It's just that we forget. We forget. And what happens is, is that, quite honestly, I want to be very honest this morning. We are not very committed. <laughs> We're not very committed. And I want us to get very honest about that. Because that's the only way I was able to change my life is when I realized, listen, I'm not 100% committed. It's like we want to change, but not really. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's like I'm going to come to unity every Sunday. I'm going to proclaim I am light. I am love. I am peace. And then on Friday, I'm going to go tell off the person at my job. <laughs> you know, I am light. I am peace. But right now with my spouse, I want to be right and I don't want to be happy. <laughs> right? So that's what I want you to feel and know that we must get to the point of where we live the principles of being the light. What does that mean? You live taking responsibility for your perceptions. You live taking responsibility for your world. You forgive, you forgive, and you forgive even if you don't want to. Why? Because you're going to be happier. Why? Because you're worthy of that. Right? And then, if you want to really live in the light, you want to live knowing. And hear me well. You want to live knowing that you have everything and you lack nothing. You have everything and you lack nothing. It takes something. Do you see how I feel that while I'm speaking it? I'm not just blah, blah, blah. It's, I want to live that. If you really live knowing that you have everything and you lack nothing, how does your world look like? Wow. But we want to compromise. We want to compromise because there's this happiness in this world that comes from the ego or from fear that is very enticing to us. It makes us special. It makes us separate. But when we start to really get into a true happiness, a happiness that doesn't come from form, a happiness that you're happy regardless of what's going on in form, that is when all this gets very exciting. It's like things could hit the fan left and right, left and right, left and right, and you're like, hmm, I feel good. <laughs> I feel good. Why? Because I am the light. Why? Because I am a perfect child of God. Why? Because I am tired. I want to go back to that innocence of when I was a little child. I look at Ari, of how filled with wonder he is, how he doesn't make things matter. He just throws up some mama. He throws up on me and then he laughs. <laughs> 